Good morning, everyone. Sean Ruggiero here. This is the Family First Life AMS Live. Thanks for joining us here on Facebook. Um, got a fun announcement. We're going to come right out and um, uh, make an announcement here that I'm, I'm very excited about. We have a new partnership uh, with Family First Life. Uh, we have a partnership with the National Social Security Advisor Association. Um, so the NSSA is a uh, certification course that makes you an expert um, on Social Security, okay? An expert meaning you have an official designation. Uh, John Wetmore, Matt Smith, a small handful of other agents have completed this course and it is a FINRA recognized designation, so it's an official designation. Uh, and it's a fairly quick designation because it's specifically focused on Social Security. So I'm excited to announce this partnership because Family First Life now has some exclusive uh, partnership uh, benefits with the NSSA. One of them being the certification. They're now going to provide a four-hour, two-day course. So four hours on one day, four hours another day on a webinar. Okay, so you log in, take your test, you will have your certification in eight short hours. It's an intense eight hours, but that's the best way to learn. Get it all, get it downloaded, learn, pass, get your certificate. Um, the other thing that they're going to be doing is working with us on some video educational pieces, things that we can use for clients. Uh, we have a co-branded trifle that we're going to be adding to the mix um, of our marketing materials. So this is going to help you tremendously. Why does it help you? Why, why are we so excited about um, a partnership with the NSSA? Why does Social Security matter? Well, here's some statistics. Over 97% of all seniors will take Social Security at some point. 97%. We don't have a larger demographic than that. 97% of people who, who are going to be a senior in the United States are going to take Social Security. So that's 97% of the people that you work with are going to be taken or already already taken Social Security. For many retirees, Social Security is their largest retirement asset. It averages nearly six hundred thousand dollars paid over their lifetime. So think about that. How many of the clients that you sit down with have more than six hundred thousand dollars invested in their IRA? How many clients that you sit down with their house is worth more than six hundred thousand dollars? So for most people, especially the ones that we sit down with. Social Security represents their largest asset, yet how much planning do they actually do? It's proven statistically, mathematically, that claiming at age 62 is a bad plan for many, many people. Yet what do you think the most common age to claim Social Security is? Age 62. People need help. People need advice. Can you imagine if you're an expert on this? If you can cite some of the law, if you can reference examples and, 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 and rules and tips and tricks on Social Security? See, the average person we work, work with, probably 50% to 75% of their retirement income is going to come from Social Security. So you want to be an expert on that 50 to 75%. All right, Sean Mike has said this, and I've been stressing this a lot lately because I think it's very eloquently said. Are you an investor or are you a saver? Ask your clients. How long did it take you to save for retirement? How much did you set aside to save for retirement? They're savers. They're not investors. Investors is what's your risk tolerance, okay? What, 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 how much loss can you accept? Risk and reward, speculation on this company or that company or jumping on IPOs. The reality is we are savers. And the savers are the ones that are also saving by paying into the Social Security system and we need to give them a sound retirement. Uh, next week I'll be talking about a specific Social Security plus IUL um, uh, scenario that one of our agents brought to us and we'll talk about it more and more how Social Security expertise can allow us a foothold, okay? Because the competitors you're going against, we talk about that. They're helping Jane Doe. They're not helping John Doe. Um, they need a, John Doe needs a simple plan. He's a saver. He needs to maximize his Social Security and wrap the rest of his retirement around it to achieve his goals and the goals of his surviving spouse, whomever that might be. So, a uh, couple other things. Studies show that 90% of Americans do not maximize their Social Security benefit. That example I gave earlier, that the number one time, I think it's 55, 60% of Americans take Social Security at age 62, which is not maximizing that Social Security benefit. Um, but does that apply for everyone? What if you're terminally ill? What if um, you, you're not gonna live as long? Or if you're not married? Okay, well, 
Um, how do you decide when to take Social Security? This is something that you're going to learn in the NSSA course. How is Social Security calculated? Remember I always say if you say smart things, people will think you're smart. That Knowing how Social Security is ca calculated, how many years it indexes, what the highest earning years are compared to the lowest earning years, um, that type of knowledge really goes a long way because people are going to feel comfortable with you and feel like this guy or this gal knows how this works. And Social Security is my largest asset. They said it to me and they're right. I'm going to make over $600,000 in retirement, maybe $700,000 with my surviving spouse. I really need to listen to an expert. Okay. Now the course is normally $695 with this compressed class, all the material covered, you have it done in 48 hours. The FFL discount, get this, is 395 bucks. So you're going to have a FINRA recognized certifi certificate designation okay for $395 and eight hours of your time spread out over two days very very excited about that now think about it why would you want to get this designation we gave a couple examples there but think of the starter questions you need to be talking to every single person that you know who is 50 to age 62 that's a large swath of people why is that the perfect age that's the perfect age for people because they're starting to accumulate assets. They're going to understand how much is going to be in their 401k or their IRA or their 403b or their TSP or whatever defined contribution plan they have. And they're also going to be uh, having an idea of who they're married to, hopefully, if they are or aren't, what they want to do for their kids, and how much they can afford for life insurance. All right? When you're 20, 30 years old, heck, even 40 years old, you're still kind of figuring it out. Uh, once someone once told me that uh, you don't know blank until you're 40. I, I thought that was kind of funny. The reality is it's true. I'm 43, I think. And yeah, I feel like I've, I've really only grasped some of life in the last three years. Everything leading up to that uh, was, was learning. So um, when you get someone who's 50 years old, you say, well, they're not claiming Social Security for another 15 years, another decade and a half. Perfect. That's when they need to be engaged with you. That's when they need to start planning and understanding, going into the Social Security portal and figuring out how much they've got and how much their spouse has, when they should claim, match it up with their health, what's their break-even point. If you live to X, then claiming at Y age is the optimum time. Might seem a little confusing if we take the NSSA course and everybody gets some of those letters behind their name, right? It makes people feel comfortable. You can put it on your business card. You can put it on your email then we're going to go out there and we're going to dominate the field of middle America who relies on Social Security from age 50 to age 62. Now, you're going to discuss with them the following, the do's and don'ts of Social Security. All right? Wouldn't that be a good way to start? Hey, we need to talk about the do's and don'ts of Social Security, which will be your largest retirement asset. You need to understand how it works. Okay, We can't make a proper decision if you don't understand how it works. When you're going to claim, again, what those break-even periods are and how much they'll get if they wait, and then how to maximize their Social Security. Okay, now they're gonna maximize it and wrap it with one of two things, life insurance or an annuity or both. What do I mean by that? Well, if they're giving us the keys to the kingdom and they're saying you're an expert on Social Security, tell me how I'm supposed to maximize this. Then you're going to lay it out for them. You're going to ask them the right questions, uh, the health questions, the age questions, how much they need, when they need it, when they plan on retiring, whether it's part-time or full-time, uh, what the penalties might be if they take Social Security and continue to work before their full retirement age. This stuff, again, might sound a little cryptic. That's why we do the course, so we have that knowledge. But when you do that, you're going to say, great, looks like we have a pretty solid plan. The only downfall is that when you die, Susan or Mike or whomever it is, is going to have a shortfall of income. And that's late in life when the um, um, inflation has, has diminished their purchasing power. So what we really need to do now that you're 52 years old and fairly healthy is put a permanent life insurance policy in place that's going to bridge that $200,000. Boom. Life insurance and a solid plan. Or what we really need to do is redirect $100,000 of that annuity into something called the agility from a theme. Bam. Annuity, right? Or both. See, that's how we're going to break into the market. We're going to help the people we serve. You go and help some multi-multi-millionaire with real estate assets and islets, uh, that's an a, uh, irrevocable life insurance trust. They're not too concerned about what they get for Social Security because it represents a small portion of their net worth. But who do we meet with on a day-to-day -day basis? Who are most of our friends, all right? People 
who need help with Social Security because that $600,000, that's their biggest retirement asset. Let's learn. Let's help them out. Now, where you'll find it is if you go to FFLAMS.com, FFLAMS.com, you're going to see a logo that says register now. It's going to say $695 when you register. You pay it directly to the NSSA, okay? The calendar's up there, the date is up there. Uh, the first one is going to be in May, so check the link there. And you put in the code FFL, real complicated there. Put in the code FFL, it'll drop your price to $395. Get on the webinars, four hours one night, four hours there night, get your, your notepad out, take your notes, learn, absorb, and you're gonna hit that week smarter and more excited than you've ever been before. Listen, I have a lot of certifications. I believe in education. I wish I believed in it more when I was actually in college, but I do believe in it. I see the power of knowledge. And I tell you, the second I finish a chapter, the second I, I pass a course, I just feel imbued with this, this sense of confidence that I know how this works. I, I often get accused of over explaining things. Well, that's, that's me. It, it, you know, excited that I know how to help you, that I know what the rules are and I know what the best choice is for you. And that's what makes an effective advisor and that's what gives you the confidence so you can go out and sell more annuities and sell more permanent life insurance. And we're not talking about just, you know, $50 a month life insurance. We're talking about $500 a month life insurance. We're talking about $1,000 a month life insurance, policies that pay you $10,000 and you're helping someone with this tax-free death benefit, with, with solving the income gap, okay? So go to FFLAMS.com. You'll see the link there. Enter the code FFL and uh, you'll go ahead and uh, be registered. Good morning, Family First Life. Uh, this week, I just have numbers for you. So to start here, we have uh, IUL issue paid for week 17. We have E and H with 1,373, CLM M with 1,722, V P with two here, one for 1,490, 1,196 on another, Carol V with 3,005, Jack Y with 3,210, and Julia G with $12,600 for the week there. And now for annuities, these are annuities issued uh, April 18th through April 24th. We have Tiffany G and Justin E with a split here for 464,483. Mickey T and Tyler T with a split here for 250,000. Samantha D with 150,000. Stephen R with 100,765. Jared H with 86,619. Frank E and Eileen D with a split here for 85,124. Shelly M with 75,562, Pamela M with 49,320, Len D with $42,012, Linda L with 22,850, Ivan V with 22,000 and Leticia M with 10,000, bringing our weekly total to about 1.4 million. That's all I have for you guys this week. Have a great week and we'll see you next time. Charles Hines and I'm working with Dominique Rogers and Conrad Pulowski outside of the Midwest and Golden State Agency. I'm currently running business in Detroit, Michigan right now and I wanted to tell you guys about my experience I had on finding a $500,000 annuity. <clears throat> so a lot of people ask me like what type of leads am I running and things like that but it's just the same leads that everyone else is running so it's no particular or special lead it's final expense and mortgage protection. I run a lot of direct mail leads um, but this particular person that I've actually sold the $500,000 annuity was actually uh, um, mortgage protection. So I didn't expect them to have $500,000. It was a um, $80,000 house, and the neighborhood wasn't that up to par. The house is about a two-bedroom, 800 square feet. Um, so when I went in there, I just did the regular spill as far as mortgage protection because my primary goal, my bread and butter, is selling life insurance. So I made sure I sold the life insurance first, but my opening statement is just like anything else I said. I said, uh, I just wanted to make sure we're on the same page. 
uh, when you sent this form in for the mortgage protection, you pretty much was looking for some type of coverage to cover the loan in the event that either you become ill, you pass away, become disabled. Was that your goal? And he said, yes. So I said, okay, great. What I'm going to do is ask you a few yes or no questions just to find out what's suitable for you and see if I can help you obtain that goal. And he said, okay. So what I did was I followed the steps and I made sure I didn't skip any shortcuts. What I have here is a binder that I made at Office Max, but it's the straight client worksheet that we were provided by Family First Life. If you don't have one of these, I recommend you get one from your upline or ask them how you can find one. But pretty much, I just went through the worksheet. I, you know, asked them his first name, last name, monthly income. You always want to get their how much money they're making because at the end of the day, when you find out how much money they're making, you can know if they're being honest, if they're saying they can't afford something. Um, I asked him his medical conditions, what type of medications, um, his mortgage balance, monthly payments, got the mortgage term. Uh, then I asked him at the end, I was like, before I offered the product, you know, I asked him, I said, hey, do you got anything else that pretty much could pay off your assets in the event that you either pass away or become disabled? And he said, no. And I was like, so you don't have life insurance? And he said, no. I was like, what about investments? Uh, 401ks, TSP, CDs, 403B plans. And he was like, oh, yeah, I got a 401k. And then I said, okay, you ever lost money on that before? And he was like, yes, actually I did. And I was like, how much you paying in fees on that? He was like, I don't know. And I was like, how come you haven't did what everybody else is doing if you've lost money on it? He was like, what is that? I was like, I'll talk, about, talk to you about that later. But um, you, and you don't know if you, uh, what you paying in fees? And he said, no. I was like, all right, we'll get back to that. So I just planted a seed on it. And then um, I, started, I proceeded to sell him the life insurance. So I ended up selling him an HMS 125 with cash back uh, over a 20-year period so he can get his money back um, early. And then at that point, he would return back a lump sum of cash so he can place that money towards the premium, um, the premium, of, the balance of his mortgage. So while I was filling out the application, I was like, oh, yeah, just planting other seeds. I was like, yeah, so it's ways that you can eliminate, you know, the risk of the market. I, I do understand that you're 65 right now. And you're looking to retire off of these funds. So you don't want to be in a situation to where you're paying somebody fees and you're at 100% risk. And you're looking to retire off of these funds and you, don't want, you can wake up tomorrow and the government can just, how would you feel if, you know, you just lost 60% of your account and you can't get it back? Like $500,000 and you lose $350,000. How would that make you feel? And he was like, that would make me feel bad. I was like, yeah, well, it's a way that you can pretty much move this money Take advantage of the gains in the market, but have no risk at all. Never reap the, the downfalls of the market. And then he was like, how I do that? I was like, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I get you approved here. And then we'll come back to that and I'll see if I can help you out. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty, I'll, I'll be able to try to see what I can do for you. So I finished the life insurance application, got him approved, helped him with that. Then I told him to go get a statement for me. I looked at it. I saw, you know, most people paying anywhere from 1% to 3% in fees. I was like, so what we can do is we pretty much can eliminate this fee because right now you're paying this 2% fee and you say you're only averaging 6% a year and you're at 100% per risk. I mean, 100% risk. So what I can do for you today is, if it's possible, I can eliminate this risk that you have. You'll have zero risk. Scratch this fee that you're paying off. Protect your money. You'll be able to return, the, and you'll get, you'll get a return off your money that's higher than what you're getting right now because I, when I um, did an illustration on the thing, it was about 8% at that time. So he was only averaging 6%, so I was showing him an 8 and he was playing 2% in fees. So if you after you take the fees out of that, he's pretty much only gaining 4% to be 100% at risk. So I was able to eliminate that and pretty much get it done like that. So he was pretty much sold just based off of the fact that he didn't want to lose any more money. You don't have to be a genius to roll over money or anything like that. If you don't know what you're talking about when you're inside of the house, all you have to say is, I can help you out with this. Uh, just go give me a statement. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it back to our finance department. They'll review it. They're going to present the best option for you, what they think fit best for you and your family and your situation, and I'll come back to you in another day with this. You know, if you, as long as you say that, nine times out of ten when you walk out with a statement, when you come back, you're going to be rolling something over because somebody else will be able to help you out 
and um and guide you through the process making the sale. But you don't have to be a genius. The first annuity I sold, all I knew was they just wasn't gonna lose any money and they was down with that. So once again, I'm Charles Hines and that is how I discovered $500,000 annuity. All right, everyone, uh, AMS, this is the classroom. We're gonna learn today about uh, why you shouldn't pay your mortgage off in retirement. Uh, now, that's a, that's a general statement. For every rule, there's an exception, okay? It's, uh, I always I give the analogy of a bell curve, right? If, if this applies to a lot of people in the middle, there's people here and there's people here that might have extenuating circumstances. Um, but for most people we sit down with, um, they, it, I get this question all the time. I, I, had, um, I had one of our agents ask me again just this last week, hey, can you help us with this? Uh, I was on a phone call with Bridget and another agent covering this same thing. So it, we, we get it a lot in the field. Uh, a, a, a client has a lump sum, okay, an IRA, um, uh, a, um, um, a 401k, whatever it might be, or maybe they just have a large sum that they inherited. And what they want to do is they want to uh, pay off the house, right? This idea that I'll no longer have a payment and I'll be secure, I'll be safe. Now, I understand that. I understand that, especially for uh, a, an older generation, this idea that I just want my mortgage paid off. I remember when I was giving financial advice to my father-in-law, He's that, he's that person, 41 years at Boeing, never changed his job, showed up, I don't think he ever took a sick day, and he wanted his darn house paid off. And I said, you're not gonna pay it off. Here's what we're gonna do. And it was very painful for him, but he got it. I laid it out carefully and said, here's why we're not gonna do it. Because uh, at the time, what he was gonna do is take money out of a qualified fund to pay off his home. And we're gonna cover this here in a second, but it made no sense because the money was very, very cheap, it was a tax deduction. And what, do you, what happens when you take money out of an IRA? You pay income tax on it, right? It's not what you want to do, okay? So we did it as a phase down thing, got it fixed, and five years later the mortgage paid off. And he was thankful because he saw the results of it. But, but clients are going to have that same mentality that I don't want it taken away. I don't want to pass on a burden, being a, a, a payment, to my wife, to my kids. I want the darn thing paid off. I have a payment right now, it's 1500 bucks. I want it to be zero, and that's the logic. So we have to help them out. Here's the tools, here's the logic behind helping them out when a client says, I wanna pay off my, my, my home, okay? First, what is your real savings? They look at it as a payment, okay? So I have, let's say, $200,000 in an IRA, and I have a $200,000 mortgage. It has a $1,500 payment. What is the savings if you pay it off, $1,500 a month. See, that's the way they see it. But you understand, the $200,000 can earn you money also. The $200,000, let's say it's even non-qualified money, you're not taxed when you take it out. It can still earn you money. So what's the real savings? Well, let's look at this. If your interest on the house is 4.25%, okay? Remember, primary residence interest on a mortgage is tax deductible. It's tax deductible. So if you're at a 20% tax bracket, then you take out 20% of that. Your real interest rate is only 3.4%. 3.4%. There are MIGAs, multi-year guaranteed annuities, fixed annuities that pay more than 3.4%. So based on math alone, you could say, do you want to save 3.4% a year or do you want to make 4%? Right? It's that simple. But let's look at a fixed index annuity. How about the Performance Elite 15? Not the plus version, just the base version. In many states, that's a 9% bonus. That's almost three years of interest savings. So if you're trying to save 3.4% by save, put, uh, paying off your home, you could do a Performance Elite 15 and right up front get a bonus that is equal to almost three years of those savings. And anything you make on top of that just separates it more and more as a sound financial decision. So remember, what's your real savings? Rates are low, they're in the fours usually. It's tax deductible, so deduct the tax percentage. That's your net amount. So do you really wanna pay off that mortgage knowing that you're only saving 3.4% or that we can probably get you a higher percentage yield? 
okay? Second thing, your write-off, this deduction of interest, your write-off helps keep your provisional tax rate low. Now, provisional tax rate, I haven't even talked about what taking qualified money out does to your income tax rate. To me, that's obvious. And many times, the money that they're looking to pay off their home is qualified. Please, please do not touch that money. That's a silly decision. Because what do you do? You raise your marginal tax rate significantly, too, if you're trying to pay off your mortgage. And you stop earning interest on that money. That's your retirement money. You hear about the 4% rule? Well, unless your mortgage is 4% of your IRA, you probably shouldn't pay it off because you just destroyed your entire life savings. So qualified money is really, and I hate to use that term, it's a no-brainer, but non-qualified money. Let's say they had non-qualified money, $200,000 of non-qualified money, and they want to go ahead and pay off their home. Understand that tax write-off is actually helping you quite a bit because your social security tax, and we talked earlier about how much of our retirees' income is based on social security. That social security tax is suppressed by the write-off. So let me give you the math. If you had a $200,000 mortgage at 4.25%, that's over $8,000 a year in interest. That lowers your tax rate by $8,000. So provisional tax, the calculation, for, which is what they use for Social Security, the provisional tax is going to be half your Social Security. So let's say this person makes $24,000 in Social Security. Well, that's $12,000. Then let's say they have um, an adjusted gross income uh, of, of another 20000 okay? So that's putting them over the 50% of their Social Security being taxed. If they have $8,000 of write-offs, it drops them back into the 0%, right? So there's three bands. There's 0 to 50%, so none of your Social Security is taxed half your social security is taxed, or the more likely scenario is when people reach into the 85% of your social security is taxed. 85% of it. So Mr. Client, if you pay off your home, you're gonna go from half your social security being taxed to 85% of it being taxed. That's a 35% difference. And here's the funny thing is people don't even know this. They never think of it. Advisors don't think about it. Again, that NSSA certificate, that designation would be helpful because you're going to learn about provisional tax. And when your tax write-offs drop your adjusted gross income, then that helps you keep your, your, your Social Security taxation low. The last thing is you are not liquid. That's a big deal, right? Ask them some big questions. How would you access your money if you need emergency cash? You can go do a home loan without a job. If you need an emergency cash, how are you going to access money? And what are you going to do if you need to pay for long-term care or nursing home care? Maybe do a reverse mortgage. That can take a long time. And it can be expensive, okay? I'm not saying reverse mortgages are a bad idea. Heck, you can do a reverse mortgage and still have a mortgage, depending on the equity that you have. My point is this. My point is that if you need to access the, any of that money, you can't. All you did was save yourself a payment every month. And in, 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 in trade-off for that, you raised your Social Security taxation, you potentially earned less money, and you eliminated all your emergency funds. So those are the three reasons why you don't want to be paying off your home for most people in retirement and the three arguments that you can make. Not because we're trying to mince words or trick people, it's because we're trying to help. And bringing these things to light is what helps our retirees. It gives them confidence in you. It gives them a plan they can act on. And that allows us to write our products, make money for our family, help them out, move on to the next client. Okay, everyone, thank you so much. What's up guys, Andrew Taylor here, uh, Family First Life USA. We're just wrapping up the Vegas Spring Sales Conference. It was one of the most jam-packed agendas I've ever seen. Uh, we had annuity training, 
20K producer training. Every person that trained issued 20K last month. Um, we had sales managers training, and I, I invited a couple of new people, and I said, look, the people that are training, they're not just saying, hey, come work here and come do this. They're actually out there selling or building a massive team and getting results. So you're gonna hear from people that are actively doing it and you're actually gonna get results. Now, as I sat in there and I heard the training, I heard somebody that started with us four weeks ago, saw the aggressive Family First Life compensation model and already issued or submitted $1 million of annuities with the company. Like, this is insane. This is double than what I used to get. I'm like, that's pretty awesome. We can get people now that are gonna make way more money on all different levels and attract more people to Family First Life and let them take care of their families as well on multiple di in multiple different areas. Now the most competitive annuity compensation, the most competitive med sub compensation, the most competitive life compensation, all the different lead vendors were awesome. We heard David Ayer talk about how he's been writing annuities on Facebook leads. He goes, you know how I do it? I just ask. That's all I do, I just ask. We heard Jack Y talk about how he's Hall of Fame producer two years in a row now, going on three. And he's like, you know what the secret is? 30 appointments a week, and I drive a lot. And, and I like the reference he made, he goes, my friend thought I was crazy for driving so much, as much as I do, and then I showed him how much I made, and he said he's actually crazy for not doing it, because I showed him how much business I'm writing every single week, and he's like, would you drive this much and work this much if you could get this result and that way you can be set for life with all the things that you put in place. Now, one common theme that I saw in this meeting was a lot of producers, they're only looking at the life insurance sale. And I think where Family First Life is changing is that we have very smart, probably the best trained agents that I've ever seen. And there's no reason why someone should buy any insurance product any other insurance product from anyone else except Family First Life. And we gave the reference of a cow. So you get a cow and it's like owning a cow and you're only selling the meat. And you're not you're not getting the milk, you're not selling the manure, you're not selling uh, you know the bones someone said to make soup. You're not you're not doing the uh, you know you could use it for leather whatever. How many different ways people eat the tongue, people eat all kinds of stuff. They eat the entire cow pretty much. Now when an agent goes into a home and they're only looking at just selling that life business, they're not maximizing the potential and the profitability of that client, which is kind of like a cow. So what we said is, hey, let's, let's put some, some things in place together. So we're like, hey, if you're selling, if you have a client that needs help with Medicare, you can call this person and you guys can type in the notes to get this information. You can call this person and you know they'll actually help you or give you a referral fee to help them with their Medicare. That way maybe all the clients that you're just walking over, over time if you're new you can learn Medicare but you can be compensated through this referral fee uh, to you know maybe pay your lead bill or annuities. Now we have a bunch of people put in place where they'll help you, they'll run the illustration for you you don't have to really know anything. They'll run the illustration for you. They'll be on the phone with you while you're in the home. In some cases, they'll even go with you to the home and you give them a 10% commission split. The agent keeps 90, they get 10. They get 10 for helping you. But like that's such a good deal. When I was brand new, I would have probably sold 100 times the annuities I did because I was selling none for probably my, the first five years of my career because I didn't know what I was doing. If I had somebody to walk me through, I would have paid them you know, I would have given them 50% if I, if I had that because 100% of zero premium is zero. So it didn't really matter. So now we have all those in place. Feel free to um, type in the comments below. We can get you that information. And we're excited to keep truly taking care of clients by offering all these different products. We're excited to truly keep taking care of, uh, you know, families because the profit margins will go up the amount of premium, the, the amount of income that comes off of each lead will go up and uh, continue to get close to a billion dollar company fast. And another agent, I'll, I'll leave you guys with this, another person came up to me and he goes, dude, I've been in insurance the same amount of years as you and I've you know had the same opportunity have you, as you have, but I didn't take it serious. And now I have, I see where you're at 
and I see where all these other people are, and I never stuck to my schedule, I never did all these things, and now I have to make up for the 10 years I wasted because all the things that, you know, the fun I had and the birthday parties I had, it, it, they weren't that good because I still have to wake up every day and worry about paying my bills. It's like now I see you and you're like, hey, you can, you know, make, make X amount of dollars per year even if you're not there, that money's still gonna come in. He's like, so I feel like I missed the boat, but I'm jumping on it now and I'm ready to go. And what I, the message I wanna give to people is the company doesn't go from zero to on track to issue 250 million in one year if it's not exploding. And you can be a part of it, or you could sit back on the sidelines and watch. And if you wanna be a part of it, it's just a couple years of hard work, and then you just, have to maintain everything and I heard Mike Killamit say something on a call the other day that really like it made a lot of sense to me because I lived the exact same thing he goes every week I would every week I would go for five years I would drive to Alabama and I would my girl my daughters would cry when I left and I would I don't know if he said he would actually cry or he felt like crying I think he said he would actually cry he's like I don't want to leave my kids for these two days this sucks and they're saying, please don't go. Please spend time with us. Please come to our soccer games, whatever. And he goes, but then now he can do whatever he wants. He's their soccer coach. He sees them all the time. Uh, he can, you know, it was a small temporary pain for a long-term gain. So he just wanted to remind everybody, yeah, it is a lot of work at first, but it's not forever. You, get, you can get a lot of cash flow running in the field and building an agency at, a, at the same time. And I was just sitting there watching that, thinking about all the things I missed all the thing, things I didn't go to, you know, but it was temporary and now I can do whatever I want, but I'm still working a hundred hours a week because the company's exploding and there's too many people to help and it's too easy. We have the best thing in the industry. We're offering the, the most aggressive thing in the industry and it's fun. It's fun helping people. So let's get out there. Let's capitalize on all the different aspects of, uh, you know, let's break down that cow and profit on all different areas of it and um, help some families and, and take care of our own. Thanks.